Hello and welcome back to Imminent Collections. This is my Bionicle series. So this is part two. Uh, I've already uploaded part one. That concerned the Matoran and the Toa Nuva that I had in my collection. And kind of just going through them, you know, taking a look at them. So today I'm doing the kind of flip other part of the coin, which is the baddies from the early era of Bionicle. So I do have more to go over. That'll be in part three. That's like rest of Bionicle, basically. But obviously I collected a lot during the early days of Bionicle and then later on I didn't collect as many. So I'm just gonna jump in like I did with the last one. I've done a little bit of research in all of these. I've used mainly Google Lens to kind of identify the names of characters. And I've used the Bionicle Wiki uh, just to kind of Look at more info on them and, you know, know which is which, basically, by name. So, I started with the Matoran last time, which is the good little people. Well, this time it's time for the bad little people, and that is the Borok. So, without further ado, let's begin with the very first Borok. That is Tanok. Here he is. So, the Borok are quite small. Um, but honestly, they are one of my favourite toys ever, I'd say. Um, they've just got such a cool design to them. So we're going to go through them. So basically, a bull rock is a kind of almost circular little creature with like arms and legs. The whole play feature of the uh, bull rock, as you can see here, there's a little rubber band around here. And its head goes back and forth. It's a little bit like a terrifying chicken. Um, so, as with the Toa and the Matoran, they are all themed after kind of an element. So, of course, Tanok is a fire-themed Borok. Now, I'm going to level with you guys. I don't fully know much about the history of the Borok. I know it's fairly extensively mentioned in the books and stuff like that. I haven't really read them. There's quite an in-depth wiki article on it, but I, I'm just mainly looking at the figures today as opposed to talking about any backstory and stuff. But they are kind of a horde of stuff. Now, unfortunately, Tanok's not the best one to start off with because, as you can see here, there's a little seat kind of thing uh, under their domes. Now, I'll get onto that in a second, but that is where the Prana is. Uh, they're kind of like mask things that control them. We'll get into that. So we'll just take a quick look at the design of Tanok. So obviously he's red, he's got like a fiery thing here. His hands are very fire based. Uh, as we'll notice as well, each of the Borok have like a theme to them. And obviously he's orange and red. So the kind of cool thing with the Borok as well, I'll just show you with him because there's no point showing you with every one of them. Um, okay, unfortunately, his his hips aren't great either, but, ah, wait, no, hang on, uh, I do believe you can turn bull rocks into balls to kind of roll them around. Obviously, that's not perfect, there is, like, a better way of turning them into balls, but, you know, part, part of the thing of them being, like, circular is that they're meant to kind of, like, roll at, uh, people. So the cool thing about the Borok, I find, is that because they're quite small, they're very poseable, um, even more so than the Toa, I find, especially more than my Toran. So, like, you can, you know, make them do quite dynamic poses. So each of my Borok have, like, a different pose. And, you know, I mean, they're all kind of similar. But, you know, you can move their hips much like the Toa. You can make them wider. And I think you'll make them, you know, lower to the ground and stuff. But yeah, so that is Tanok. On to the next one. Next up, we have Galok, the uh, Borok of Water. Now, uh, just to say as well, sorry, I just called them Prana. They're Krana. Um, and these are these masks here. So we'll take a quick look at Galok first, then we'll look into it. So it's kind of a webbed design for its hands, obviously, because it's a water-themed one. And yet again, it kind of, it does this, all of them do this attack. Now, in the adverts, there was a weird thing where if you loosened the top here and did this, it would throw with Krana. And, like, the, the whole point was these would land on a Toa's face or, like, a Matoran's face and corrupt them, basically, because these are kind of, 
they're kind of symbiotes, I guess, in that they live uh, in accordance with the inse insectoid kind of robot things of the Borok, that it's a bit of a symb symbiotic relationship. So, yeah, it, that's kind of the law of it, basically. Ah, no, the hips on Garlock, actually, because they're aligned the correct way. I could have done it with the other one, but, you know, I'm too lazy to do that. There you go. So this is how I used to store them. Uh, when I'd keep them in, like, a box or whatever, you could store them like this, or I guess like that, or whatever. And, you know, they'd, they'd kind of roll around. There's there's lots of way to make a bow rock uh, into a ball kind of thing. So, as I mentioned, this is the Krana. So let me take off the dome piece. So, technically, if you did do that, that's there. And this grey thing is hinged, so it could, like, throw the Krana. So these are kind of, like, weird, thin... Uh, masks basically so these will fit on a toa's face as you can see there's the whole thing there so these will go on a toa and it it looks kind of weird unfortunately i don't have a toa down here anymore um but yeah so you you can imagine anyway so each of the borok came with a different krana now i'm pretty sure as well there's sort of 40 or 50 different krana that you can get, or maybe maybe Krata I'm thinking of, which are the Rakshi ones, which we'll get to in a minute. Um, but yeah, basically they all have different coloured ones to go with the Borok, but there are special ones you can get as well. Unfortunately, I think I've either lost the one for Tarok, or I just never got it. I want to say it's blue, that one, but I could be wrong. But yeah, so anyway, this is Galok, uh, on to the next one. All right, we have the Borok of Acid, Levak. Uh, so I like that they went for acid and not like air, because it would be a bit weird if there was a Borok of air, I guess. Um, so this one, uh, just to say, isn't technically a full Borok. As you can see, its legs here are different. Now, I bought this secondhand at a store I saw about a year ago. They're only five pounds, which is yeah, a little bit cheaper than I think where you'd find them complete, uh, like on eBay or ever. So his legs aren't technically correct, but I think the rest of him is. I want to say he's got two of the same pincers, which might mean that whoever owned this previously had like two of them, maybe because it feels like that's correct that side, but it's the top the chunkier bit should be up here for the other one. I don't know if that's the case. Let me know in the comments if this is completely wrong. Obviously, this doesn't have uh, even the the thing either. I just bought this because I wanted a complete Borok collection, and this is one of the last ones I didn't have. So I jumped at the chance and I just saw this in the wild randomly. Um, so yeah, so he can do the thing. Unfortunately, because there's no, um, there's no Krana kind of seat uh this doesn't clip down very well but you know i could order the extra part on bricklink or something or on ebay i may just buy another levac i don't know but he is very cool i do love the green uh the green color and stuff he's got really cool like mantis like pincers i'm a big fan of that of course the um dome design is the same for all of them so yeah so this is levac next up is parak the bulrock of stone so, as you can see, this is an original one as well, because he's got his Krana, which we'll uh, get onto in a second. So, this is another pose that's kind of cool. This is what I mean in that you can get them to do loads of different poses. This is more like an aggressive one and makes more sense for, like, that kind of thing. So, he'd be putting his arms back. So, he's a stone-type bow rock. As you can see, he's got a very craggy kind of hand there. Good for digging and stuff. And of course, he's got a Krana, which is green. Um, so this is the same design as the Krana for Garlock, uh, the blue one there. It's just green instead of uh, orange. It's So I forgot to mention as well, these are kind of rubbery. It's hard to describe. They're not plastic. They're like, you can bend them a little bit, if you know what I mean. Um, so I'm pretty sure as well, the Krana do come in different um, designs. So I think we'll be looking at one in a second, actually. But yeah, so this 
Again, is one of the ones I owned originally because I've still got the Krana. I bought it myself as a young child. So on to the next one. Unsurprising to everyone, Korak is my favourite. He is uh, the Ice Borok and uh, there's just so much going on that makes me really love him. So um, the main thing is just the juxtaposition of the blue and the white. It really makes him look icy and kind of cold and stuff. Also, he has, um, well, chainsaws or buzz saws as hands. Again, that is like, it's so cool compared to sort of, I mean, the other ones have really cool themed ones as well, but this is just like the coolest one. Uh, of course, he can do his attack as well. Uh, this is another one I bought as a child because he has his Krana. <clears throat> now, this Krana, as you can see, is different. Um, so I want to say there are six different designs of Krana. Now, I don't know if it was random which one you got with each Borok. I don't think it is. Um, yeah, this is really cool as well. I prefer this Krana to the other one. The other one just looked like a shriveled human face. This is more like weird alien stuff. So I'm going to put that back into Kalok. Um, Kolok? Kolok? I think his name is? I don't know. <clears throat> um, right, and we have one more of the regular Bionicle. And the last one is Nuvok, the Borok of Earth. Uh, so this is probably my second favourite Borok. So this is the other one that I found in a uh, second-hand shop few years ago and I've got to say the colour scheme is just amazing. So the black very much stands out if that makes sense. Along with the green eyes. Green and black just works perfectly together, translucent green. He doesn't have a Krana unfortunately. But honestly this guy is really cool. He's got, um, I don't know how to describe it really, it looks like pincery kind of stuff. But his hands are just really cool. I love that they're symmetrical as well. I'm always a fan of symmetrical designs, especially with things like this. And yeah, overall, he is just a really, really cool bow rock. I do need to get the crowners, the ones I'm missing. I may try and buy them online or ever. Hopefully they're not too expensive. And there is, of course, one more bow rock. And that is Parak Kal. And when I say of course, I wasn't expecting you guys to know I'd have Parak Kal. But after they made the bow rocks, they did make... Borok Karl, which are basically kind of silver versions of the Borok. They're like recreations of them. As you can see, he has slightly different ones to Parak himself. So this is Parak's claws, this is Parak Karl. Um, so they're basically using the same parts, except it's a little harder to tell what element he was. When I first bought him, I thought he was the red one. Uh, but he's brown. Obviously, it is brown there. I just didn't have a good look. Uh, he also has, a, like, a dome thing that, obviously, he doesn't have a crana. That is lost because I bought him secondhand as well. He's also missing an eye, which is a shame. But I bought him just because I'd always seen these in stores, but I never bought any. Um, and, you know, I thought, hey, look, he's £5 as well. I'm sure I could fix him up for a few pounds more. But, yeah. I like the Borok Carl. Um, there is Borok Var as well, which would slightly different again. But um, yeah, overall, honestly, the Borok, as I said, are one of my favourite design toys ever. They've just got such a cool look because they're like a bit insectoid, they're a bit robotic, they're a bit everything really. And I love the like colour scheme of them all as well. And honestly, they're really easy to put into cool poses. I mean, these aren't amazing poses, but like... You can get a variety of different like emotions from them, which is what I really love. And they're really minimal on pieces. There's only like 20 or 30 pieces in each one. So uh, yeah, Borok, definitely up there for me. It is like a 10 out of 10 design. Honestly, I prefer the Borok to the Borok Cow, but I mean, that's just my own personal preference. Anyway, on to some more villains. All right, it's time for more villains and baddies. So these ones featured in the first movie, Mask of Light, and are arguably probably my second favourite uh, design, or maybe, nah, maybe third or fourth, I don't know. But that is the Rakshi. So the Rakshi obviously are Makuta's henchmen, basically. 
Uh, and so this is the Rakshi of Fear Turak. So, as I was saying with the bow rock, oh man, I love that the green one was acid instead of air. Man, these really go out of the way. They, these have no elemental affiliation. These are just bad stuff. So this is the leader to rock. Uh, so we'll take a quick look. So I've kind of posed him already, but so they're very serpentine. Um, if you remember the head from the uh, other thing, I can't remember what they were called. No, the small ones, the Matorans, they were corrupted. They had the same head. Uh, so all of these, these do have eye colors, I think. Um, yeah, okay, so this has like a red eye color. They're very difficult to see, unfortunately, apart from a few of them. Um, so they're kind of hunched over. They all hold staffs. Um, you can take, technically take the staffs away, but I mean, eh, it doesn't look quite as good. And obviously each of them have a head that is synonymous with sort of the element. So this is his, it's very fire themed. Uh, and obviously they've also got I'm going to have to heighten my camera. They also got like fin designs, so they are all individual and unique as well. So there's fins here. Now there's an action feature, which is that it goes side to side. This is actually quite useful for posing, because even though it does have the propensity to go either one side or the other instead of staying neutral, bit of, you know, bit of jigging, you can kind of do it. So the legs I really like because they're, they're really in-depth. There, um, there's a massive range of motion. There's like a knee joint, so you can have, you know, really cool poses and stuff. I mean, if you've got like a stand or something, you could have it, you know, about to like leap over something or whatever. Um, and yeah, they're really long as well. Now, I I tend to, as, as it was paused just now, I kind of tend to have them kind of ducking uh, or bent over a little bit more because it just like it suits them more they're very serpentine and of course the last thing about them is they all have crata inside them so i don't think every one of these have crata but kind of with the bow rock as well there was the kind of play feature if you left this open you could do that and you can again attach the crata onto the face of a tower because it's got the circular thing, it just kind of, it's weird. It doesn't look quite as cool, but they are all themed. Now, Crater, I'm pretty sure there's like glow-in-the-dark Crater. There's multicolored Crater. I mean, these are kind of multicolored. It's kind of orange to red, or like brown. Um, so they sit inside. Those are the slugs that Makuta puts into the like bodies or whatever. Um, and yeah, honestly, like, Overall, I just, man, I love the Rakshi. They're like, just very evil henchmen kind of things. And again, as with the Bow Rock, these are infinitely pausable. You can really, like, do some crazy stuff uh, with the Rakshi. So, that is a bit of a weird pause, but I'll, I'll sort it later. But yeah, so that is the Rakshi of Fear. Up next, next up, is Gurak, the Rakshi of Disintegration. So, uh, yet again, going with the just, like, objectively bad things, Disintegration ain't good. Uh, so this is the, like, water-themed Rakshi, technically. I mean, obviously, you know, they're not really affiliated. So you can see this one's eye is a lot clearer. They're, like, red uh, on a blue thing. Uh, it's... Slightly more aquatic themed, kind of heads to its staff there. Uh, again, you know, it's blue coloured. It's definitely got some fins going on, which I really like as well. Uh, it's also got the play feature, of course. And the crater inside is, uh, is, is really nice. It's very ice looking, actually. Now, on the topic of ice, I do not have the white Rakshi yet. Uh, I only have five. So... I am missing that as well. You know what? I may have to make a bit of a bionicle purchase after making these videos. Because uh, I'd really like to have a full, you know, a full collection of Rakshi. So, as I say, it's very it's very easy to kind of make them look menacing or whatever. So that is Gurak, the Rakshi of Disintegration. Oh, please don't fall forward. Right, on to the next one.
It is Lyrak, the Rakshi of Poison. So, in keeping with the Green Bow Rock, uh, they are both poison. So, this one I bought second hand. Uh, this is quite a few years ago now, but much like the Bow Rock, I think it was five pounds, and I was like, I don't have the Green Rakshi, I've got to get this. Um, a man, what a purchase. So his legs are a little bit looser than the ones I bought as a kid, but I mean, this is probably just played with more by this previous owner. So it's uh, staff is very, I could see this being a poison kind of themed thing, like an injection or something, I don't know. Um, and it's fins are like, I, I really dig the fins actually, they're kind of segmented and stuff. It's very cool. Uh, and I don't think it comes with the crater. Oh wait, no, it does. It does come with the crater. Okay, hey, there you go. Um, so this again looks very poisonous. If I saw an insect like this, I would not be happy. Um, very much like in the like bright green at the end there. It's worn a little on this side, which is weird, but... I, I Again, these are rubbery as well, much like the crana. Um, which, you know, kind of is in keeping. I'm sure they're probably slightly easier to produce that way. Or maybe they're harder. I don't know, actually. But there you go. That is the Rakshi of Poison. Next up is the Rakshi of Fragmentation, Panrak. So uh, Fragmentation and Disintegration, they're kind of similar. Um, I mean, it is slightly different, I guess. Fragmentation pulls things, you know, to pieces, where disintegration just gets rid of it, so it does make sense. Uh, so this is another one that I saw in a shop along with the um, the Rakshi of Poison for £5, so I was like, I've, I've got to get this. Uh, very much happy with that. So he is kind of fragmentation, I'm, I don't know if that would, I mean, it looks like it would shoot a beam of some kind, so that's kind of cool. Um, his fins are very like, I do like the fins, they're, it's hard to describe, they're sort of like, they're symmetrical but also not symmetrical, if that makes sense, and I think this comes with a, uh, crater, yeah it does, hey there you go, that's the disintegration crater, again these are just slugs that Makuta puts in the back of the Rakshi, and um, I think these are slightly more pausable than the bow rock as well. Obviously, there's more to work with. Um, but yeah, you can make some really menacing pauses. I really like that one. Uh, right, on to my last Rakshi. This is Vorak, the Rakshi of Absorption. So, uh, un it's unfortunate that his name starts with Vo and it's about being absorbed. Don't, let, let's, not, let's not dwell on that. Uh, so this, of course, is the Black Rakshi. Um, I think black and white uh, Bionicles generally are some of the most striking because they're kind of, I don't know, I, personally anyway, sort of they're slightly more tension drawing than the colours, the coloured ones. I don't know, maybe it's just me. But uh, this guy absorbs people, apparently. Um, they look like pincered kind of things, I kind of see. Again, I you know, I'm sure there is like a law reason why these look like they do. The... Um, Man, these are like punk as hell. It's, that's just like a punk mohawk, basically. Uh, it's got red eyes and it's crater. Yeah. Is this fella? He's uh, very black with a tint of sort of silvery white at the end there. Uh, that also went quite a distance. It actually rolled off my table. Maybe it has life of its own. But yeah, honestly, these. Uh, these creatures are just incredible. Like, the Rakshi, I don't love them quite as much as the Bow Rock, just because, as I said, the Bow Rock just have an incredible 10 out of 10 design. But these are really good, sinister looking creatures. Like, you can pull off some incredible poses. I really like them. And they've just got the right proportions that they're really weird and very serpent like. In the movie, I did notice they looked a lot more serpent-like than this because their back extended and had like a little bit of a tail at the end. These don't, unfortunately, but I mean, that's that's how it is making, you know, figures and toys. 
you've got to make you know some additions uh, or subtractions. But yeah, so that wraps up my Rakshi. Now it's time for one more creature, one more thing to end off this video of evil. It's your boy Pterodax, the original Makuta. So obviously Makuta and Matanui are uh, the good and evil of the Bionicle universe. And this is the embodiment of basically the devil, um, that is Pterodax. So Makuta's taken several forms over the years. I've always referred to just him as Makuta, but I realise that there are a few Makutas. Um, or reincarnations of Makuta, I suppose. So this is Pterodax. He's referred to as the Makuta, I suppose. Um, also, just a quick aside, you will notice, like, wait a second, he's got, like, claws. Um, looking up information on him, I realised the reason I had two spare claws that uh, the Tower of Light was wielding one of. It turns out these are actually just Makuta's claws, so I've put them on him now, which is why they may look familiar. But yeah, this guy is a beast. This is what a set. Actually, hang on. There we are. That's, that's a better look at him because he is massive. So he uses a lot of really interesting pieces. So we're going to look around. So he's got a shoulder like a tower. But then he's also, his shoulders are considered of the chest plate of uh, Toa. Uh, we've also got the legs of Irakshi, basically, as his arms along with the spine of a Rakshi. Now you can also, I do believe, open this up. Now there's nothing inside it. Uh, you could put a Krater inside, of course, because I think in the movie he pulls Kraters from his chest to put into uh, his Rakshi. He's got really cool pipes. I think they're like Technic pieces, they're just not in many Bionicle things. Uh, so he does have a, a play feature, which is slightly annoying. So when you turn this here, he goes back and forth, which is for like swiping his, you know, his staff here. Um, however, it does mean he's a bit of a pain to kind of pause because he does tend to just spin from one side to the other unless he's well balanced. I mean, that's just how it is. Uh, so his legs are also Rakshi backs, which are very cool. Um, and then his feet, so behind his feet, are two Pohatu uh, things. So the Toa Nuva, Pohatu, the one Toa Nuva I don't have, I know these are his weapons. Because um, a friend had a Pohatu. And yeah, it's kind of annoying. It's like, oh man, uh, you just reminded me I don't have Pohatu. I will one day, I promise, I will buy one. Um, and yeah, he's just a really well-constructed, you know, creature. He's massive, he's bulky. He's taller than, like, anything. Let me compare him to a Rakshi. So, like, that's a Rakshi next to him. He's he's a good little bit taller. Uh, you know, I mean, he... The, the downside of Makuta is he is a little bit top-heavy. Sort of like his torso is more than 50% of his body, which is a little bit weird. I kind of wish they'd made his legs a bit longer. Um, I haven't seen other Makuta kits, though, so I could be wrong. As I mentioned as well, he's got claws, so he's got this thing here. It's really interesting as well, so it's on a bit of a pivot thing, so you can, like, move this as you like, really. So you can kind of have him down or, like, holding it up. It's just really nice. This is to cover it and look like claws or whatever. For years I had him without these claws, and I always thought, oh man, his arms look a little bit derpy. But I've since fixed that, since realising. His hips are also a bit weird, like they click a lot and, you know, I mean, hey, as you get older, your hips tend to do that anyway. Um, on this side I've just put, so one of the things, I think you got three for some reason in the pack of the Makuta, so I just put the other one there as like a blade or a knife or something. I mean, yeah, you might as well give him extra weapons. And then, of course, there's the famous Makuta head. So, as it happens, instead of having to move him about, uh, Makuta also came with a spare, which is cool as well. So, this is the famous, like, uh, daddy of the Rakshi, basically. As you can see, it looks a lot like a Rakshi head, but more thing. He's got red eyes, of course, as you can see there. And also, the kind of cool thing about this, and you can do it, and I'll show you in a second, it's also a mask. 
So it's also, and it's a bit hard to make out because it's all black, but it's kind of like an evil version of the Mask of Light. Um, so you can have him look like that if you want him to look more like an evil tower than a Rakshi like boss. So let me do it, you know, uh, so you just turn it around really. And it is made to accommodate this, like, you know, you can absolutely have Makut. Oh yeah, there's another Pahatu thing on his back there as well. Um, you can absolutely have him look like this. I do like this look. I think it slightly pulls it together a little bit better. It makes him look a little sleeker, if that makes sense. But I mean, the classic look is this way, you know. But honestly, it is like such a nice little detail that he can be both snake-like and toa-like. I'm gonna leave him like that for now. Um, yeah, and that about wraps up part two of my imminent collection video on uh, Bionicle. So this kind of wraps up the first two or three years of Bionicle. Uh, unless those grey Matorans, oh actually the Borak Kal may be later on as well, but they've just been thrown in, you know, because they fit the theme. Now, this this is not the end of the bad guys, I do have one or two more as well. Uh, it will be mostly new tower though, we're going forward for in part three. It's a bit more disparate, I with these I have most of the collections, like the Rakshi, I have all the Borak, most of the Toa Nuva and stuff. Going forward, I only ever bought two or three kind of Bionicle things because I was getting older and not as into Bionicle anymore. But looking back, I fully regret not doing that because some of the upcoming designs are incredible. Um, but yeah, anyway, that wraps up part two. As always, thank you guys very much for watching. I'll leave a playlist for all my other Imminent Collections videos as well. Watch part one of the Bionicle ones if you haven't. Because I go over, as I say, the Matoran and the Toa. Um, and I'll see you guys for part three, uh, hopefully in a few days or maybe in a week's time. And until next time, goodbye. <laughs>